Yes, she's CIA'd her way to France before. That was back in 2019, hey, wasn't it? But right now, <laughs> but right now, the Jeff is here in studio, a born baller. Exceptional talent, that is no doubt very high on the list of role models as well as inspiration uh, for little girls though across the country as well as the continent to be able to watch her. And I can tell you right now, that's also grown to be a celebrity around the world. Hey, we've spoken about her incredible influence over and over and over again and just a massive international player uh, that she is right now. I suppose she's also proved it uh, during the recent World Cup. She showed just what a world-class team player she is from defending, we saw her attacking. I mean, overall, she was just completely superb. Her impact was immense. Uh, and I suppose when she limped off with that injury in the Banyana last game against the Dutch, the ever-eloquent, straightforward Jermaine Seposinwe is here with us, fresh from the flight to the studio. I'm sure quite tired as well, but we take the privilege and the honor, uh, Jermaine, of seeing you, welcoming you, and saying welcome back, champ. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I promised that I would come, and so I'm honoring that one for you. Was it just because of that promise, or there was just a desire to <laughs> to chat? Because ultimately. We enjoy chatting to you. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy chatting to us. I do. I do. I think, you know, um, we need more exposure for women's football. And so yeah. coming to speak to uh, people like you that, that champion the game for us as well, um, it's super important. So, um, yeah, I was, I've, I am still tired, extremely tired, but yeah. I had to make this trip over here. I know, because it's also just the time zone. It's a time difference mm -hmm. that also gets to you. Yeah. Are you back to a normal-ish way of life or it's no. been like a couple of days now just no day. no 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 i'm not at all this morning i woke up at like two in the morning and i was just wide awake yeah so yeah that's why i'm pretty tired right now but yeah we'll we'll power through this one i hope so hopefully that coffee we gave you was strong enough <laughs> to, to see you through <laughs> can hope and pray uh maybe we ask you difficult questions then that will <laughs> keep you awake that's for sure it might, yeah. what was going through your mind though flying back from the world cup I think just a sense of relief and accomplishment. Um, I think as a team, you know, kind of the way we left the country wasn't great. Yeah. Um, a lot of people had a lot to say about, you know, the team's mentality and, and us as, as human beings. Um, and they didn't understand kind of the position that we had found ourselves in in that moment. Um, but yeah, I think then going there and just, you know, refocusing, regrouping as a mm. group understanding what we're capable of and the talent that, you know, the team has. Um, I think that definitely helped us through. But for me, it was just a sense of relief. Getting out of the group stages um, is what we we kind of felt we could do. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I think the injuries to me and my Bambanani uh, kind of derailed. Um, our, our, our main goal was to get to the next round because I felt like we could. We had chances in that game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you kind of disappointed, but also... Um, you're proud of, of what the team has achieved. Mm. Let me grab a couple of things that you've said, and they're very, very important. Listening to you now, and you talk about how things were when you left and mm -hmm. how misunderstood yeah. the group of girls were. Mm -hmm. What hurt you the most? I think just, just not understanding, you know, the type of respect that the group, I think, has, has, has done so much mm. to get from the association. And everyone, you know, having their own opinion as to, yeah, we, we're just doing this for money um, and things like that. Um, but for me, I think just the lack of respect kind of hurt me. And I, and I spoke when Danny came over to, to speak to us. Mm -hmm. um, I told him that. I said, you know what? Like, for me, it's not even about like, what people have said, what NEC members have said. None of that. It's just the lack of respect um, that I think we continue to have to go through every mm -hmm. time you come to the national team. Um, you play your heart out for the country. Um, you're so proud to put that shirt on and to be a part of the group um, and to walk out there to represent so many people um, that have their hopes and dreams, you know, on your shoulders. And so uh, for me, that's all I told him. I said, it's just disappointing. Like, uh, I don't... And I think I almost teared up a little bit there when I spoke to him um, because we've achieved so much. Like, you African champions, you feel like, okay, this is the time. It's going to change. You're going to see change. Um, when it comes to Banyana, but, you know, it's just every time and consistently mm. coming into camp, fighting, having to work hard, having to achieve 
um, you know, things that no other Banyana team has mm. done before and then still getting the same treatment. Um, and so for that, that was that was what I kind of just relate to them in terms of where I was coming from. Was he receptive to that? For sure. Was he? Because you can be receptive, but do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. you, you'll hear because a lot of the people that spoke smack about you, mm -hmm. you mentioned the, the NEC member. Mm -hmm. And I will repeat what he said mm -hmm. in the post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that is doubly hurting for someone yeah. who says that, who is a part of the structure, mm -hmm. talking about a team that's going to a World Cup mm -hmm. and talks in that belittling manner. Yeah. You know, anywhere, any organization, that person would have been chucked out mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, the audacity to say what he said. But when you talk to Danny Jordan and you tell, you're one of the senior players, yeah. you, you play overseas mm -hmm. and, and you play very well overseas too. And does he say anything besides just words? Oh, no, he did. He was very receptive to, because I think he also, he respects our opinion. I think it was me, Tembi, Andile and Fifi that was in the meeting with him. Um, and he wanted us to explain, you know, exactly what had happened and why it got to a point where it got to. Uh, and he, he heard us and, and because it was just us. And uh, so when we spoke to him, uh, he heard us, he listened to us. And, and what he said back to us, um, we appreciated the fact that, you know, he's taking our opinions and, and the fact that we are hurt by, you know, the things that were said about us, um, what the media said and all these things, and that there was, the narrative wasn't corrected. Mm. Um, and so... Uh, I think he did listen. Uh, he didn't just come there and just, you know, look at us like we're crazy. But he listened um, and he said that he was going to try and change a couple of things that had happened. Mm. Um, and so we Did he mention what exactly he would change? Because <laughs> you, would, you would need to hold him accountable to that at the end of the day <laughs> if he doesn't change it. I mean, I can't, rem I can't for say exactly remember. Uh, and I think it was a very, like, heated meeting as well. Um, but yeah... I'll keep that to myself in terms of what he actually said. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he did say that, you know, he's he's also um, kind of what is it, heartbroken, but also disappointed in the things that, mm. you know, had happened. And if we had come to him, um, because Tembi had mentioned, you know, we're human mm. at the end of the day. Um, and I feel like there's, there's that kind of difference between when you treat players like, human beings and you care for them there's i don't think that it would have happened as mm. how it happened you know uh, we just felt like they dehumanized us in a certain type of way um and and when he came uh and spoke to us and had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us he heard us and that's all we wanted mm. when you explain things to us like we're not gonna just say oh yeah whatever like we're just gonna do whatever we want uh we understand that this is a national team we play for the country um the hopes and the dreams of, of the country they lie on our shoulders. So it wasn't done intentionally, but I think sometimes you have to go to a certain extent to be heard. Um, and I don't think a lot of people understand that side of things as, as well as I feel like we wanted them kind of to see the mm. picture of what was happening. But is there an open door policy generally? Like can you as Jermaine or can... Tembi, just pick up the phone and, and phone the president of the association and, you know, vent out even before things happen and say, you know what, what you guys are organizing for us there in Sakane is, is not on. We're going to be harming ourselves mm -hmm. ahead of a tournament. Mm -hmm. um, we also don't think that that's adequate opposition to play mm -hmm. against and, and, and. Mm -hmm. Is there that open door policy? Yeah, I mean, he texts us all the time, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he does text us and we have his number and we can call him. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we know there's a chain of command. We can't sure. just jump over, you know, the manager's here, the CEO's here, this, everyone that kind of then gets to him. Um, because I think in AWC, there was a similar situation and then Tembi kind of just went straight to him and then he fixed the situation. Mm -hmm. So, we do have that open door with him where we can go to him and, and he already knows he's like, it's Jermaine again. She's probably saying something crazy. Um, and he says that to me all the time and we have that relationship. So I, I do think that we can go to him, but we also respect the chain of command. We don't just want to jump people's head and then they feel disrespected by the fact that we're disregarding what they're saying and just going to the president and say, okay, fix this or else this is going to happen. We also don't want to put him in a situation where it's like we're holding him 
to gunpoint and saying, do this, 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 or this is going to happen. Because so, that's the image that sometimes gets painted in terms know. of the media. Mm -hmm. But do you feel, though, that the software-related bonus issues were sorted out? Yeah, that was sorted out. I think before we, um, as for the players, with the staff, it was still a situation where they were going back and forth, back and right. forth. Um, and I don't know if it was if, if officially sorted out. I hope so. Um, but with the players, yes, uh, when we brought the union in, we had a conversation right after everything had happened. Um, and we just and we spoke about, you know, the bonuses that we were looking to get. Um, and they agreed to those um, those I wouldn't say demands, but requests that we kind of made in terms of, mm. you know, what we feel like we should get. And, and we were reasonable. Mm. I mean, we could have been unreasonable and said, OK, whatever you guys want to take an, another team to the World Cup, do that. But was it close to that? <laughs> was there so another team being beaten 5 mil? Um, I don't think so. At the end of the day, I, You've I feel earned like... You've the right to go to the World Cup. We did, and that's yeah. the thing. I think, you know, as players, we went to the AWC, we won, we qualified for the World Cup. Why would we, why would we jeopardize that opportunity? Mm. Um, because we've worked for it. Mm. So I don't think we were ever at that point, but it was a situation where we just wanted to be seen. We just want to be respected and supported in the way we feel like... Um, the team has merited. So I think that's kind of where you, the all the opinions and the, the fact people that didn't really know exactly what was going on, I think that's where they kind of uh, generated those opinions about us. Good evening, Rob and Jermaine. Uh, Jermaine, I just want to thank you for your relentless uh, contribution in this World Cup edition. Uh, you guys represented the country with excellence and a distinction. And for somebody like me who normally follow uh, progressive uh, trends of football, uh, there's something magical that you did in that game against Argentina. You ran with the ball, a uh, post, and played a timely pass to Uhil Ramachaya, who then connected with your pass nicely and played a, a, a pass to Utembi. Uh, who then uh, scored uh, from the first touch and it is believed that when a player uh, pulls that pause uh, it causes some brain freeze into the uh, defense uh, particularly uh, when the team has got a compact uh, a disciplined defense like Argentina did you anticipate uh, doing that move and uh, is it something that is inspired by your uh, global football knowledge I just want to hear your views around that uh, what inspired you to do that because it's something magical uh, which is normally seen in the uh, uh, Spanish La Liga or Portuguese uh, League uh, uh, to unlock a defense, uh, particularly where teams are compact and strong. Thank you so much. Deboho, thank you so much indeed. Jermaine Seposino is my guest, Banyana Banyana, senior football player uh, with me here, straight out of the World Cup. What Deboho says, <laughs> <laughs> you were listening very attentively there. Yeah. How do you respond to that? Because he calls it progressive football that he has seen, especially in that game against Argentina. I think he mentioned. I think he's talking about the Italy one. Yeah, where, yeah. Um, I just. I think when I got the ball, I just knew. Okay, first don't mess up because <laughs> the game's on the line, and if we win, um, then we're going through for sure. And so, as soon as I got the ball and Hilda passed me the ball, I got the ball. I was running, and two players were coming towards me. So it was going to be really difficult to kind of take them both on and not lose the ball. So I saw Hilda. As they're coming towards me, my, I was pausing, pausing, and I looked up, and I saw Hilda making that late run, and I've, I've made that pass to her once in training, um, but it was too hard. Uh, and so I knew that if I, pl I put it just right, um, she has a great first touch, and, and she's an amazing finisher of the ball. Um, it's going to kind of force her into the box. It's either the Italians were going to have to kind of come towards closer down, or they were going to stay have to stay with Tembi. Um, so they were going to be in two minds, um, and also in the World Cup, as soon as you touch an attacker in the box, it's a penalty. So um, it's always going to be dangerous if I was going to play that ball kind of into that a bunch of Italians mm. um, and they wouldn't know exactly what to do. So I literally just try to play it as good, like not hard, too hard, but not too soft. Um, and I saw her making that late run, played the ball. And as soon as I saw her first touch, I knew, OK, we're on. And then I was like, okay, what are you going to do next? Because yeah, yeah. so, I saw, and literally the goal before that she scored, she shot it from the same angle, but Tembi was in a better position. Um, and so, yeah, when she passed the ball and Tembi just passed in there, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that was definitely one of the greatest moves that I've been a part of with Maniana, besides the, the, the game against Nigeria and, and Morocco that, you know, the second goal, that was also one of the most amazing goals I've been a part of. But yeah, 
that was kind of what was going on in my head. So you weren't surprised that that gold was trending right around the world, just everyone praising the move. No. Uh, the, the precision, preempting, running off the ball, all of those elements came to the fore in that goal. Yeah, not at all. I think with myself, Hilda, and Tim, we have this relationship that I feel like, you know, we can always cause defenders trouble. Yeah. Um, it's just on the day, like, if we are in sync, then I know, okay, things are going to work out. Um, and as soon as the, the second, the goal that Hilda scored, I was like, okay, cool, we, we're rolling. And then we kept on getting the ball and we were going forward and creating opportunities. Um, but I knew an opportunity was going to come where we were going to score because um, I just have that belief in both of them. Um, and for me, I think my role in kind of facilitating their ability to finish is just trying to get the ball to them, passing the ball into spaces where I know they can hurt defenses and, 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 and finish. And so, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just... It's amazing to be a part of that trio or the trio. I was going to say, you, I mean, you, you've previously, or on most occasions, though, you, you share a room with Tembi. Yeah. Was it the same now with the World Cup? Yeah, it was. Uh, until we, so it was up until we got to like the 18th and that when we were officially given over to FIFA. So we were all in single rooms. Okay. Um, but yeah, up until then, we were, we've been roommates. And, and that also helps the dynamic because you, you almost speak what you're going to do on mm -hmm. the field. Yeah. So you find it helpful, especially given your position. There was a stage where I think you were still uh, playing in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, where you were like their old-time goal scorer yeah. uh, with 34 goals yeah. in the time that you spent there. But mm -hmm. at the same time, with the Bulldogs as well, you were the old-time assist person. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, So you kind of walked away with records and all round because then with 13 assists, it's a dual role that you play. For sure, and I think... And, and with Tembi, it's somebody that you can do exactly that. For sure, and yeah. I think that's... I kind of, that's that's my role I take in the national team. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, a lot of people do expect me to score um, because I do that at my team in Mexico. Mm. Um, but I'm also a facilitator, and, and when I'm in my team in Mexico, I have the ball. You know, I'm giving the ball in my hands, like mm. Jermaine, try and, you know, create chances for the strikers to finish. And so I love taking that role up in, in the national team as well because, I mean who's going to get the ball to the people to score. Um, someone has to do that. Yeah. And we all have roles within the national team that we have to play. Um, and for me, it's like, because I'm such a team player, selfless, and I love to see the teams be successful, I don't really mind being that player within the team. And do you find that the role that you play in Mexico, because I mean, we'll chat about Mexico and why you mm -hmm. love Mexico so much. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that you've, you've even stated, I don't know if it's changed, uh, the fact that you will retire from football in Mexico. For People sure. still tell you, hey, go to Europe, go to Europe. But you've said, you've declared, and I'm taking you back to your words a couple of years ago. Yeah. That you will retire in Mexico. Is that oh, still yeah. the case? Uh, that is definitely the case. I love it in Mexico. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed my time there. Um, I'm moving to one of the biggest clubs in Mexico, Monterrey. Um, so why would I want to leave? Uh, my coaches love me there. Um, they play the type of football that I want to play. Um, they encourage me to be who I want to be. Um, and, you know, I'm in a great mental space there as well. So for me, it's I'm enjoying my football there. So, yeah, I mean, if a better opportunity comes at a team that I've always wanted to play for, then maybe I will take that. But yeah. for now, I'm really, really happy in Mexico. Well, at I, least it's a two-year contract this time around. Yeah. You know, I've been worried about these <laughs> one-year contracts. One year. What's going on? So there's a greater commitment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But also because of the World Cup, um, I kind of structured that in, in the way that it is now. Um, normally, deliberately, yeah. Yeah, deliberately structuring the way in, in the two year because my team's already playing. It's the fifth week in the season. So I'm going to miss out, you know, a couple of weeks. And so I think I also felt like going into the World Cup, I wanted to have that concrete like contract where... Um, Whatever happens at the World Cup, I'll have a team to go to. Whether I get injured or not, those are things that you always have to think about because you're going into a tournament like this and you don't know your future. So for me, securing my future before I went to the World Cup was extremely important. And then I decided, okay, let's do a two-year contract this time yeah, around and, <laughs> and not a one-year. But because, I mean, for me, it's just I believe in my ability when I go to a team. Um, the thing is I had an option to yeah. renew at Juarez. It's not like I didn't have an option. Um, I, that's just how I structure my contract with my agent. I don't want to be stuck at a team when I'm not happy or things are not going my way. Um, and it's not that I walk away from adversity. It's just as a professional um, player and with a career that's not as long as other professions, you have to make sure that you 
make the right decisions for yourself. If you feel like, oh, I'm, I believe in my talent, I know I can get an even bigger contract at a better team, why sign like a five-year contract at a team you know like is... And Juarez was a team like was coming up in the league and, and they still are developing. Uh, but I knew that with my ability, I can secure a contract at a bigger team in the league. I think where I was going with that question was that your role at club level versus your role at international uh, team level, is that different in any way? Do you find what greater freedom playing at club level than you do at the national team or is it pretty much the same? I think for me at my team, I have greater freedom um, just because of the structure that we play in with the national team. And that's not taking away anything from how the national team plays or whatever. But we have a structure within the national team, how we play and how we can be successful. Um, and so why would you go away from that? So for me, it's I've come in to fit into that. And also when you play with, you know, great players, they also when they're at their teams, they also have the ball in their hands. Their coaches give them the ball, hey, do whatever you want make the team play so when I'm in the midfield with like players like Linda and, and Fifi you know like I can't be the one hogging the ball and not having them do their thing as well because they're amazing players as well so we all have to figure out a way to share the ball um, where we aren't getting frustrated with each other and want to you know kill each other after the game <laughs> and where everyone can be a star in their own right so I think that balance within our na within Banyana is working for us. Yeah. And so why go away from that? Why try to be the star when um, when the team works well, keep it that way. And what so was it, Jermaine? What was it about this group of players, despite the adversity, yeah. despite the disrespect, despite the way you guys left our shores, <laughs> despite everything, yeah. the negative headlines, the portrayal mm -hmm. as these greedy bunch of whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Something happened. What was it? What? I mean, I've I've never enjoyed. No, well, I don't know about waking up at two a.m. or four a.m. <laughs> but that was also simply because I could not wait to mm -hmm. see the ladies playing again. Just tell me what then happened that we don't know. Yeah. That brought about that magic. That I mean, we were here at Prime Media House, yeah. spilling our breakfast here all over the place, yeah. just jumping up and down with excitement. What? was it what happened i think it's just a special bunch and and i i told them this i said guys you know when you fight for each other against adversity and against things that or what you believe what you believe in like when you come together as a group like that you can't take that away from your team wherever you go whatever happens after this like we will always be united in a common goal and so that then translates onto the field and you can see that, you can see how we fight for each other, how, you know, when someone is down, you're there for them, you work for your teammates, you defend, you attack, you do whatever is necessary um, to, 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 to be successful. And I think that's just the mentality within our team. Um, because we know we're better as a team, not an individual, that's what we kind of lean on to. And so I think what happened in South Africa kind of just unified us even more because coming from AWC, you champions, okay, like you feel like, okay, you've done you've done something that no other Banyana team has done. You're walking with a lot of confidence and then boom, you know, you get hit by reality. And then you're like, okay, cool. Like we can fight. We can still, you know, get things going and, and work things out. Um, and so when you do that, what whatever you fight with, and I, I believe this with all my heart, like when you fight, with each other off the field on the field it just it just creates a different kind of team camaraderie within you, the the group jeez i'm afraid that time's gonna overtake us but kaylin swart mm -hmm. that factor was she aware of all the missiles that were being blown in her direction in terms of south africa's couch potatoes uh, who were <laughs> watching and saying what they were saying about her because i would imagine as a human being yeah. who also interacts on social mm -hmm. media that she would have been kind of hurt by that. Yeah, for sure. I think to a certain extent she was. I don't. I don't really think she knew the gravity of it in terms of what people were saying. Um, and then at the end of the day, she's just the player. You know, the the t the coach chooses who is on the pitch, um, and she gives everything. Yes, we all make mistakes. Um, as players, it's just a pity that when a goalkeeper makes a mistake, it's there for the entire world to see. 
I mean, I make mistakes on the pitch all the time, but because I'm so high up the pitch, it doesn't really affect, um, you know, the, the outcome of the game as much. Um, when I miss a goal, like, no one's yelling at me or saying nasty things to me on online. Um, but we were just trying to encourage her, and I and I feel like a lot of players were, like, telling her, like, get off social media, dude. Like, it's not, it's not worth going on there and checking what people are saying about you because you know the hard work you're putting in at training. We see you at training. Um, and the group is going to fight for each other no matter what. And she made, it's crazy to me because in that Italy game, we should have lost that game because there was the one, the, one, the one chance at the end of the game they had. Like she made a brilliant save. And so no one, had, no one had said anything about that, but they kept on going back to all, you know, their nasty comments about them. Um, but I was like, dude, you, kept, you were the reason for the most part that we won that game. Yes, we scored a goal and everyone's looking at that, but that last save right there is what literally defined the game and why we're in the round of 16. So take heart in that and take confidence out of that and take this into the next round. So And don't allow, you know, whatever people are saying, their opinions, They they everyone has an opinion. And that's what sport is. That's what soccer is that's about. It's just that obviously social media, it is, Twitter especially, <laughs> it's, it's, you, you game. Everyone can say something because you've got this person who's got no name uh, who can say whatever they want to say. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, there's a collective of saying, ah, yeah, we want Lamini, yeah, mm -hmm. we want this and that. But we don't know the dynamic, yeah. you know. And obviously that'll be a coaching question uh, yeah. that I will throw to Des when she does come through uh, into studio. I don't want to put you in the fire. <laughs> yeah, as please. Far as that I'm is not the so coach of the team. I'm <laughs> just a player. The coach. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> More from Jermaine. We'll take a final shot when he come back. Uh, good evening, Robert Marawa. Jonas Sebola from Alex. Uh, what a fantastic player. What a player. I really enjoyed uh, watching her playing there at the World Cup. She's a good player. I think her, uh, Linda Magaya and uh, and, uh, and Rifilwe, it's, uh, it's just unfortunate that Rifilwe uh, played only one game there. But uh, I think they had a very, very good uh, uh, tournament. Uh, I think uh, uh, she, she's, a, she's, a, she's a fantastic player. She's a good player. I really enjoy her playing football. She's a good player. Yeah, she must just keep it up. And then, yeah. I wish uh, uh, everything of the best, you know, um, for uh, yeah, for her team as well, because uh, she she's a good player. Very good player. I think she agrees. Eh? You agree that <laughs> Jermaine's a good player, right? Uh, yeah, you somewhat. Agree? Somewhat. She's a, she's a good player. She's a brilliant player. All right, more voice notes. Hey, hey, Marawa. Uh, good evening. Hello, Jermaine. Uh, Jermaine, we love you as South African man. You know. Uh, you guys have made history and we are very proud as South Africans. Uh, we've seen you playing in this World Cup and we are very certain that already come next World Cup, you guys are going to break records. You guys are going to even make us, I don't know, as a country. So, yeah, keep up the good work, you know, and remain humble, okay? Humility. That's a new idea, isn't it, that word? Yeah. Humility. It is, yes. You can't erase it's it. It's tattooed on me, so... <laughs> Love it. Love it. I was going to ask something. Let's leave it. <laughs> good afternoon, Marawa. Hey, good afternoon, champ. Um, it's Kaya in Mlazi. In Devon, yo, yo, yo. Every time you touch that ball, I would say my favorite player. You've been my favorite player since you started playing there for Bafana Bafana. Well done. I loved the way you delayed the, 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 the pass before uh, Hilda got into the box and you passed that box to her and she passed it to Tembi and then oh Italy was done thank you very much uh, I hope you you still gonna carry the this flag high for Banyana Banyana well done we are very proud of you we are very proud of the whole team we are very proud of the whole Banyana Banyana team thank you thank you very much all eyes were on you guys eh? <laughs> For a change, Banyana was getting the attention they deserve. Yeah. I mean, we just, I think by the way we play, and I think South Africans appreciate that, that when we go onto the pitch, like we give everything. You can see the desire uh, and the mentality of each and every player on their pitch to give everything to, you know, try and win the game by all costs. Um, and so I think when you do play like that, South African, the public, appreciate that and and we we are proud to play for south africa so you can see that in the way we play good evening mr rob it's sulu falang here and good evening to the established shoulders once again and to your guest there jermaine 
three words what a baller what a player we could we could come up with whichever three words but hey those are my three words to Jermaine Sipposen where she has given us top class performances not just her of course all of her teammates as well everybody that has represented Banyana Banyana in the best way possible and uh, let me just say congratulations you may not have won the world cup you might not have went to the semi-final you might not have went to the quarterfinals but you have made history you amongst a lot of players being the first senior team in the history of south african football to qualify for a knockout stage at a world cup come on it doesn't get bigger than that jermaine superstar and i think it's something that you definitely got to give yourself a nice high five a pat on your back and just hey take in the moment because you do deserve it you deserve the respect you deserve all the good that comes your way and again no 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 question from me it is just me simply telling you man well done you are a fantastic football player i saw the mess you were doing against these other teams yes you might have gotten one win in in the three group uh games but man the mess you were you were creating against all those opponents come on man you were just incredible you were just a fantastic player and for me it is just me wishing everything the best and i know that even more greatness is uh coming your way and uh yeah congratulations on making history great show as always thanks was that you blushing there <laughs> no <laughs> come on rob <laughs> yeah, absorbing all this love man thank you thank you south africa appreciate it well for thank you so much um making my guess a very little words now <laughs> evening there rob evening to Jermaine. um not really have much to say except that um i feel the girls made us really proud as a country um, by going all the way to round 16. Something that has never been done, even by the male counterparts. So really proud of the girls. And now I honestly hope now that um, Danny Jordan and Cole will finally give them the respect that they deserve. I mean, I know she spoke about it, but I mean, come on. We know that she's just... But yeah, I just hope that now finally they can really just see them for what they are. Exceptional players really making the country proud. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, exceptional players indeed. An exceptional mind as well here in studio because a highly learned individual. Yeah, what is it? Four years that you spent at the university yeah. in Stamford. Yes, four years with the fifth, uh, but that was like for eligibility to play soccer. But yeah, yeah four years, got my marketing degree. So yeah. Business Anyone, admin. Yeah. Marketing. Anyone wants to employ me when I retire, uh, hit me up. <laughs> I mean, you, you've done your internship, though, eh? I have, yes. Levergy? Levergy and Cecil, yeah. Yeah, and Cecil? Yeah. I didn't go to Safa. I ran away before that part of my <laughs> internship. <laughs> I had to go back to play professional football. Yeah, somebody reminded me as I was driving. Said, ah, you, you've got somebody who was a very shy girl when she was working at Cecil. Um, they just wanted me to wish you well. Thank you. They remember you from that time. And I said, uh, if you were working for a PR agency, and I think you did back then with Ubuntu. Um, Mm -hmm. um, fulfilling i suppose you were looking at life beyond football i was yes i think at that point i had just gotten back from america and i wasn't really sure about what i was gonna do um was i gonna go play professionally was i gonna work and you know i got my degree so might as well use it um and then that opportunity came and i i i just loved working you know with levergy and and sasso i learned so much um, but yeah, it was when my agent called me up and he was like, yeah, there's a team who wants you, you should probably, you know, take this into consideration. I was like, yeah, I think, um, I'm, yeah. I'm 95 should probably take a little bit of the back burner. <laughs> I'm going to go back to playing football. <laughs> Look at where we are now with you at the yeah. home. Hey, Ubuani was saying that kindly asked Jermaine, would she accept an offer from Kaiser Chiefs if they were to approach <laughs> her uh, with an offer for the women's team? Uh, uh, you know what? It's it's kind of tough for me because I don't know if I want to play beyond when I retire um, or if I'm going to come home. Uh, I, that's still um, kind of up in the air. I was at the World Cup. I was telling my my teammates, yeah, this is my last World Cup. I'm retiring. And they were like, no ways. You can't do that. Da, da, da. And you're like, going on to be. Um, but I, I think would you... go on because you're 29. <laughs> you still have another World I Cup know, to go. I know, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you want to leave on a high but yeah uh, i'm not retiring anytime soon yet um okay. but i don't know if 
I'm going to come back and play in South Africa. I don't know if, you know, when I retire in Mexico, will mm. that be it for me? Um, but that's that's still a long way to go. Um, because you, you, you're professional. Yes. South Africa, there's no professional setup, yeah, as that's, you know. You know, that's the thing. And I mean, at the end of the day, I know my value. And so are they going to offer me what I want? And that, that kind of comes into, you yeah. know, perspective for me at the end of the day. Do I go and like pursue um, because I'm trying to pursue another de degree as well? And so do I focus on that and give that all my energy or do I continue to play soccer? A in degree in football? what? No. In law. In yeah, law. I'm going to get a law degree. Yeah. You'll be doing well. You look around Santon. <laughs> all these high rise buildings are all legal firms. They've, yeah. they've been doing well in recent time. <laughs> they recent have. time. Lots of politicians, <laughs> lots of uh, corruption cases that have been sitting there. I they've, wouldn't know anything about it. They've been milking it. I'm telling you, we watched. There was a, yeah. a telenovela called the Zondo Commission that we watched every day. <laughs> Those were lawyers being paid top dollar. Um, uh, so yeah. So that I would mean, be a bad idea. Yeah, not a bad idea. So yeah, I mean, I'm just taking in all the options that I have at the moment. But for now, I'm fully focused on you know going back to Mexico, um, getting there as soon as I can, and um, getting back to scoring goals and assisting and helping my team be successful. Unquali uh, says, Bongani, uh, saying that you're one of the the best players in the Banyana squad. Uh, she's evergreen, always plays for the badge for the team, always selfless. Uh, it's not a surprise that she'll be playing uh, for one of the best clubs in Mexico. Her hard work has been recognized. I mean, there's there's gazillion and one messages here on, on Twitter, and we do appreciate it. I'm not going to be able to read all of them. I'm highly inquisitive because <laughs> I've got only five minutes left uh, with somebody who has sacrificed a trip to Cape Town, which has been for today, uh, postponed it for tomorrow, so I don't take that lightly. I'm putting that on record. Thank you. To say thank you very much indeed for honoring <laughs> us right here on MSW. Um, and I think it's 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 par and cause because you're gonna go to Cape Town. There's still gonna be a celebration of some sort because they. I will, hope not. Actually, no, they they're <laughs> gonna be happy to have you back home. Yeah, my my family will. I hope there's yeah. there's no party because the last time I came back from oh, Afghan, they threw me a party and I wasn't. But you really happy. It. I mean, you've made history. Your team has made history. I just want peace, Rob. When I get at home, home is peace. <laughs> I know, but so there's so many people peace. at my house, and my mom is inviting all these people to our house, and sometimes you know you just want to decompress because it's been such a hectic like 59 days for us yeah. and so you know you just want to decompress and how many hours fly to mexico oh the fact i'm gonna have to fly to the u.s first so that's yeah. 14 hours and then to mexico from there depends probably like another three four two so 14 plus three yeah so 17. so that so 17 hours is enough to decompress no way you can't be decompressing when you're at home <laughs> <laughs> that is just, just that's out. I I, I refuse. They, oh, they must they I'm must a, welcome you. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and sleep. That's the thing. So on the flight there, so that you know I can actually acclimatize as well because of yeah. the, the time changes that I've been through. And so, you're still gonna be going into now that you're back home. How long did it spend in Cape Town? Because as you said, five weeks into the new season in Mexico, mm -hmm. but you've been obviously given the ticket to go to the World Cup. World Cup is done. Yeah. You're at home for how long? When do you go back? Monday, I think. Um, I ha we haven't. My team has spoken to my agent, and so yeah. I think Monday was the day that I kind of gave to them in terms of uh, if uh, if I can fly on that day. Um, but yeah, I would like to spend the weekend at home with my family and then yeah. um, from there yeah travel back to Mexico so it's not a long time at home and that's why I don't want too many people at my house when You're, I get hey, there that's the life of a superstar <laughs> man maybe if you chose to do knitting we wouldn't be fucking <laughs> my, I might do that <laughs> no it's too late it is too late uh, you, you've reached thus far so I mean like I said there's there's so much to unpack but one thing that I appreciated about the Jermaine that came back from from the U.S. was somebody who became extremely aware of self, aware of rights, number one, aware of rights when it comes to equality, mm -hmm. aware of rights when it comes to what you do to Bafana Bafana, you must do to Banyan mm -hmm. because you're both national teams. Yeah. And in in some way, I mean, I know people always look at, oh, so-and-so's a ringleader. Mm -hmm. Okay, so-and-so's not playing in goals because she was a ringleader. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, people make up stories. Yeah. But all I know about you is that you came back with a reassured self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't stopped. And I hope it never, ever stops. Because people need to realize and recognize greatness and reward 
greatness. So when you hear and read about NEC members saying that you guys are spoiled brats and you, going you're, just on holiday. Going, you're just going on holiday <laughs> there, that you discard that. So would you say those, those are some of the life lessons? The, you know, the disappointment of not going further mm -hmm. against the Dutch, who I mm -hmm. still believe we could have, you know, sorted them out. Yeah. Um, how you summarize that journey versus this incredible historical journey you've just come out of? I don't even know. I think, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we just, at the end of it, you were a woman. So you always, it's always against the odds, right? Yeah. So you realize that. And I feel like just the journey that we've been on, like as Banyana, as the group, mm. it's transcended, you know, all of this noise that is going on outside of us. It's It's gone beyond that. Um, but at the end of the day, we still have to come back to the fact that we still role models to young girls that want to play football. They see us and, and now they have people to look up to. So when all of these things are being said about you and, and it's draining, I think yeah. for me it was really mentally draining and f not physically, but mentally draining, you still have to realize that you, you have to make sure that whatever you do, it's for the next generation mm. to grow the women's game. And I think that's what also this group knows. They have it in the heart of us that whatever we do, whatever we uh, take pride in or how, what, who we fight or how people put it as, um, it's always just for the next generation. Mm. And I think mm. the generation that came before us, that's what they did. Um, they didn't have much, but now we have more. So now we have to push the game forward and we have to make strides um, for women's football in this country to see that, you know, the league gets professionalized, that more women come in to play mm. football and then better players come into the national team so that we can grow the game. Um, and for me, that's kind of just how I look at everything, uh, whether or not anyone says anything about me or they have their own opinions. And I respect everyone's opinions at the end of the day, but they, they will never know the hard work that goes in um, to being in the position that we are in and also what we have to go through on a regular basis um, within the national team, within the fact that we are women playing sports. And so for me, I just take, I just take pride in that the fact that I can, I can push the game forward in, in how I play and in, in the role model I can be to young girls um, and be, you know, an advocate for change. And change you are. And change your do thank your sister as well for being the advocate that she was on social media for you. <laughs> I love her. She's like, ah, she's my sister, Vele. So what? <laughs> she doesn't like to she doesn't like anyone to know that she <laughs> nah, she's my worry. advocate. Nah, but. she's the advocate. You, you don't have to be a lawyer now. Flat out of time. Thank you so much, Jermaine, for coming through. And I really think you've given a sense of of for the girls. You've represented them well. And I always say South African Football Association never ever underestimate people who go into tournaments. Uh, never book them for the group stage <laughs> and then leave them coming in drips and drabs <laughs> because you think they're going to be knocked out yeah. of a tournament. Don't do that. Guys. Economy, we're a little Don't. tired. Uh, apologies to the journalists that we were a little exhausted. That's why exhausted. we didn't. The ladies do flew economy, guys. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Jermaine, thank you so much. Robert Marawa, live on 947.